it's time for the 24th film in my 31 Horrors of Mike. And this movie is a little bit special. It was released in 1995. The name of it is Citizen X. It was directed by Chris Geralmo, uh, who is also known as the writer of Mrs. Zippy Burning. It stars Stephen Rea, Donald Sutherland, Max von Sydow, Joss Ackland, Jeffrey Moon, and Imelda Staunton. So with a cast like that, I mean that's a pretty incredible cast, you'd be surprised to learn that the film is very, very little known. And I, I'm not entirely sure why that is, but unfortunately it's a film that just hasn't really had the amount of credit that it really deserves. But those who have watched it all recognise it to be probably one of the best made for television uh, movies ever made. And not only that, it's also probably one of the best in its genre, but I'll get onto that in a moment. Citizen X follows the Chikatilo murders, which uh, were a series of serial killings from 1978 to 1990, uh, committed by a man called Chikatilo. It was committed during the Soviet Union's reign and because of that the Soviet Union didn't want to admit that they actually had a serial killer within their borders so they tried to ignore it as best they could they tried to persecute other people that that lived uh, nearby where the killings had, had uh, happened for example persecuting homosexuals uh, those who were already known criminals and those who perhaps had learning difficulties to try and somehow explain away these killings as part of some bizarre gang mentality rather than the the efforts of one man and the reason is that the Soviet Union said that uh, the serial killings were something that was indicative of Western society uh, a capitalist society and wouldn't happen within a communist state the film follows Stephen Rea's character Viktor Burakov who was a forensic scientist who was put in charge of trying to catch Chikatilo by uh, Donald Sutherland's character who uh, is, a, is a general in the Soviet Union's army and Viktor Burakov was told basically try and catch him but we also don't admit that he exists so Burakov was given very little to no resources to do this and spent 12 years of his life which really brought about an incredible amount of emotional and psychological strain on him as he tried to catch this man and it's a it's a wonderful wonderful film but when you're watching it you do have to realize that it, it is uh, based on real life events looking at the real life events I have to say that I'm, I'm happy that the film seems to follow what actually happened sometimes I'm I I wonder whether films based on true events should should really be made in the first place sometimes i think look just make a documentary i think a lot of historical ideas can be bastardized unfortunately when brought into fiction but in this case i think they did really really well it is a serial killer film it is also a procedural detective story but the thing that amazes me about it well the first thing that amazes me about it is that hardly anyone knows about this film but those that have recognised it just as, as a phenomenal, phenomenal movie. The thing that gets me is this. When people talk about horror films, they often talk about Silence of the Lambs. And the reason they talk about that is because it was probably the horror film which made the biggest breakthrough in terms of critical appeal and also in the awards, uh, different award, award ceremonies that won Oscars. Um, and because of that silence of the lambs is held in high regard now i think silence of silence of the lambs is an excellent film however i think there's an argument to be made that if you're going to watch a film about a serial killer citizen x is the one to watch uh yes even better than silence of the lambs some people may argue that it's not a horror film but when i watched citizen x it left an absolute feeling of horror within me so that's all i can say is that if a film provokes that sense of horror then the chances are probably as a horror film in some regard i think because of the the uh, topic of a serial killer type of character uh because of that you, you know since things like psycho and, and movies like that and even going into sort of slasher genres and splatters uh, genres where you have murderous killers who don't have a supernatural explanation to them i think horror has sort of claimed that part of, of of cinema but 
uh, some people would still argue that that's not real true horror, but to me, it is, and it's especially horrific because it's based on real events. I mean, the things that Chikatilo did, it, it's unbelievable that a human being could 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 do that to an, another person. And he killed well over fifty people. Most of them were young children. And we see the Viktor Burakov character who's investigating this and trying to catch him really struggle with this. He struggles mentally, physically, emotionally. His life um, is dedicated to catching this man. And we see moments of, you know, where the tears are just streaming down his face because he is, uh, he's a father himself. And he thinks about you know these poor kids being being murdered by this man there are some eerie moments in it as well uh, because uh chikatilo used the uh, rail network to find his victims so you have these old abandoned not abandoned but run down railway stations and he would pick people who he could see were on their own um who were traveling and often these people were were suffering from learning difficulties so he could easily persuade them to come away with him into local woods where he would rape uh, murder and also partly cannibalize them um the performances in this film are just staggering uh donald sutherland actually won some awards for this movie he won i think he won an emmy and a golden globe and as good as donald sutherland is in this stephen Rea is just incredible in the lead really uh i felt a lot of emotion watching this movie and i watched it again recently to try and uh, before i reviewed it again because it'd been years since i'd watched it but it was a film that had always stuck in my mind it always stuck there um and when i think of serial killer movies this is the film that i i think of um you may feel a little bit uncomfortable lumping it in with the others because the others are based mostly based on fiction and this film is not which which is always a sobering thought while you watch it now I have to say as well when we're talking about performance, performances here, Jeffrey Dumoon uh, is incredible. Or is it Dumoon or Dumoon? I don't know how to pronounce his last name. I do apologise. You may have seen him in films like uh, The Mist and in uh, The Green Mile. He's he's a fantastic actor, but it is the single-handed, the greatest performance in cinema history of a serial killer and the thing that creates the most amount of horror in you as the viewer is that you actually sympathize with him he commits these brutal brutal murders of innocent children and uh, rapes them does the most despicable things to them but yet jeffrey demand's performance is so great that you actually in some places find yourself sympathizing with the character and then feeling disgusted yourself for sympathizing with him and what's great about the film is that it doesn't just say oh he's evil it actually shows you parts of his life and how he's this sort of inadequate person downtrodden in a lot of ways full of frustration and anxiety at the world around him constantly with this inability to communicate with people but also this inbuilt urge to prove himself and to most specifically prove his his manhood and uh, in no way does that excuse what he does he's a twisted twisted horrible individual but Jeffrey Demon's performance really makes you not see him as an animal now one of Chikatilo's nicknames was the beast and that approach to serial killers and murderers and rapists where we dehumanize them and we think these people are monsters that stops us from being able to um, try to understand them try to find out what makes them tick so that we can identify it in other people before they kill uh, and i think that's an important lesson to be learned and it's one i think that's explored in this film where as the audience you are made to feel for this man as a human being regardless he's, he's not Hannibal Lecter you know he's not this caricature of 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 evil um he's not the mad scientist he's not the slasher in the darkness he's a human being 
And in many ways, that's where the true horror of the film comes from, because he's a type of character who could be your next-door neighbour, you know, could be someone nearby who you know. And that's what really makes you terrified when you watch the film. Uh, I cannot say enough great things about this movie. Um, it's certainly one of the best made-for-television films I've ever seen, and I think it's had it had a, a theatrical release, I think it would people would hold it up there as as one of the great, uh, great um, serial killer films. It all obviously has a limited budget compared to a lot of other films, uh, but the performances, the writing, and the the direction just really, uh, really elevate it to a level that many films dealing with this sort of subject matter just can't even hope to touch. If there was one serial killer film that someone asked me to recommend it would be this. It wouldn't be Silence of the Lambs. It wouldn't even be something like Psycho. It would be this because it's the one which is probably closest to the truth um, and closest to the, to the bone in a lot of ways. One of the things which is most haunting about it is that the film also um, explores the ineptitude of the Soviet system at the time and how it was uh, decrepit, that it was full of corruption and that it was uh, really dying under its own weight and there's this sense of stagnancy and staleness within the film because of that and that just adds to the atmosphere while you're watching watching the movie. The relationship between uh, Donald Sutherland's character and Stephen Muir's character is just wonderful. Imelda Staunton isn't in the film very much as, as Burakov's wife, but when she is on screen, as as usual, she just gives a phenomenal performance. Max von Sydow is not in the film very often, but again, when he turns up, he's amazing. Joss Ackland, not in the film all that much, amazing when he is. But really, it's it's about the three main players in the film. Uh, Jeffrey Dimon keeps cutting to his character while he's... Uh, going on on these killing sprees and then also parts of his, his personal life and intercutting with uh, Burakov trying to catch him and the effect it's having on his life and there are some really emotional moments in the film as well and that's what elevates it in one way in one regard as well is because very few horror films hit you on an emotional level and this does because number one the horror that Chikatilo um, is committing but also Burakov is this tortured man who is good and pure and he, he wants to catch this killer but he's not getting any help from most people he's not you know he's hindered and it's torturing him and at one point in the film we hear that in the FBI that people are are rotated every 18 months on serial killer duty and he does it for 12 years and the reason they're rotated for 18 months is because of the psychological strain. So you can imagine there's, there's parts of the film where he just breaks down. And the performance is incredible. Um, I just I cannot recommend this movie highly enough. I really can't. And hopefully this video and other people talking about it will, will, will make others um, pass the film on to other people. And I think it is available on DVD. Certainly you'll find it online in certain places. Watch it. If you can get the DVD, go and buy it because you just you won't be disappointed. Just such a fantastic film. And if you aren't into horror, um, as as well, you know, bear in mind that it is it, it is a, a detective story as well. So if you aren't into the, those sorts of films, then it, it it will work for you as well. It's it's just an incredibly interesting drama and one which uh, has stayed in my mind since I watched it. I couldn't believe. It was just this little film that I'd found on television one night that no one really talked about. So that's Citizen X. Go and check that out. And I'll be back shortly with another horror movie review. Bye for now.